where they had a tumor. Oh, my, it's hot there. Something is going on. Well, what exactly is going on? Joining us today to try to figure out what's going on exactly. Well, we know what's going on shenanigans the question is how are they being done a gentleman named mark havel we stumbled across from great britain but used to be very involved in this movement this is not a, a just a single revival that's happening in florida this type of thing happens quite often and mark havel used to do this very type of thing until he started reading his bible and then realized that it didn't align with scripture and discovered that what he himself was doing, the same type of things, were not biblical and had their source someplace else. And he's joining us on the telephone from Great Britain right now. Mark, we're thrilled to pieces you're with us, sir. Hey, Todd. Good to talk to you. When, when these revivals happen, we see all kinds of things. Let's try to tackle them one at a time. And sure. let's start with the tackling, the people falling down. How is it that adults who have jobs in every field imaginable and they pay their taxes and they shine their shoes why are they falling down well it doesn't matter where they have their jobs and how educated or not they are the reason they're falling down is because one people are suggestible uh, as human beings and so what happens is by getting a person into a suggestible state or what we would call an altered state of consciousness it means that they are effectively in a state of hypnosis which Again, people misunderstand hypnosis. They believe, people commonly believe that hypnosis is some kind of profound trance, which it isn't. The person who's hypnotized is fully aware of what's going on at all times. You just go through the same techniques that you would at a rock concert or, or, hip, or a hypnotist show. I'm sure people have seen these on TV in America, the same as we have them on television here in the UK. There's a process that you go through of induction, if you like. And all you do is you just change the names for the audience. So, you know, you change it for the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, words which have some kind of supposed biblical link, fire, you know, revival, whatever. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, now you've given, given us a lot of information here. First of all, how do you get somebody to that place? What is the process specifically at a revival that goes on for hours? The, the best way to do it initially is to have long periods of music. So in this case, we'll call it praise and worship. The best kind of music that will work will be one that mirrors bodily functions like cardiovascular, you know, that kind of beat and speed of the music. So praise and worship fits very nicely into that nice, relaxed heartbeat. So that will work really well. Obviously, tunes that people know, so they'll be familiar with the songs. Also, because you have a large crowd of people, the dynamics that are involved in large crowds also make people more susceptible and heighten experiences. It's kind of like, you know, you're watching a, a, a comedy show on TV with your friends, and you really, really laugh, you know, at all the gags and all the jokes. And then you watch it, the same kind of thing on your own, and it That's doesn't so feel funny. Because it's got the, the, the crowd yeah, dynamic going Absolutely. On. Sir, the tone of the preacher, the voice of the preacher, I've noticed that there is a great deal of, well, I don't want to say monotone, but they repeat things over and over, they repeat things over <laughs> and over, they repeat things over and over. Am I imagining this? No. What's no. going on? I mean, it, it does vary from one individual to the other. For example, if you go back in history, people like Hitler and, and other very charismatic leaders, and I use the word charismatic there, not in the, in the sort of theological sense, but they had, there were people like Hitler, for example, who had a very pronounced and trained way of speaking, and it was deliberate. So I'm not saying that these guys are deliberately doing that, but there are definitely certain patterns of patterns and tones within the way that we speak that will affect people again and, and put them into a hypnotic all right. state. So this is but all... by repeating things, of course, that the repeating the same sentences and phrases, that, of course, is integral to the whole thing. What's going on with these guys, in your opinion? Well, now that's a really big question. I don't know. I think, I think as Christians, one of the things we have to be really careful of is, is obviously to mind-read people's, you know, moral choices and intentions. Yeah. Uh, that to to probably a large extent is God's job. Um, however, I would say it is pretty difficult to get to a stage in your life where you lie constantly, where you where you just in it for the money, <clears throat> where you where you cover up, let's say sexual immoralities, drug use, all those kind of things, and not know that there's something drastically wrong with you vis-a-vis -vis your relationship with God. That's even if you do think you are a Christian. So when people get to that stage, I would say they pretty well know that they've got problems. 
At the other end of the scale, I think the Bible does tell us to judge. It tells us to judge righteously. It tells us to judge from Scripture. It tells us more than anything to judge ourselves first. But it does, and there are places where it says judge not, but you've got to look at all the different meanings of judging in Scripture. There are places where we're commanded to judge, there are other places where we're commanded to judge ourselves, and other places again Right, and, and again, motives, yeah. motives are, you're, you're exactly sure. correct, and I, you know, I always wrestle with it. I, Paul talks about it in Second Timothy. They deceive, they're deceived and they're deceiving. Sure. I guess, I, I guess the fall position is, you know, whatever it is, they're clearly deceived. And yeah. whether they're doing it intentionally or not is almost irrelevant. What they're sure. doing is very unbiblical. And I would suggest, sir, it can be very dangerous. In your opinion, sir, with these supposed healings, where people are feeling things, question number one, what exactly are they feeling? And question number two, are we getting people who are hurt, who are not going to the doctor, who are getting off medicines, who think the tumor is gone, but it's not? Well, the purpose of hypnosis is to, re is to reduce the subject's reaction to pain. Now, we, we, we produced a, a documentary on this some years ago called The Signs and Wonders Movement Exposed. In the documentary, we show you a clip of a person being operated on in a hospital theater using hypnosis instead of uh, a general anesthetic. And they're having open knee surgery. I mean, there's a, there's a clip with a guy with a hammer and a chisel, you know, hacking away at this woman's kneecap while she's fully conscious at the other end with the hypnotist talking to her, you know, stroking her hair and so on. So that's the purpose of hypnosis. Now, the danger of that is that when you go to one of these meetings, quite innocently, quite sincere, believing that, you know, God is going to heal you, um, people can come up onto the stage and genuinely testify, when I came in here, I had pain in the behind, and now I don't have it, now I can skip, jump, and cartwheel, and run up and down. And they will be able to do that because the hypnosis reduces the reaction to the pain. But the problem is it doesn't take away the symptoms. So when they now go home, uh, or if they don't go to one of those meetings for any length of time, then the effects of hypnosis wears off. And then, of course, they've got real problems because... If they go to one of these meetings and they're epileptic, for example, and they believe that they're healed and they go away and they throw away their epilepsy medication, then as it was the case in England at a Morris Sorello crusade, this girl threw away her epilepsy tablets because she had a, a, a twisted ankle. And because the pain in the ankle went away, she figured, well, God healed my ankle. He must have healed my epilepsy. That's more serious. So she threw away the pills. She had an epileptic fit some weeks later and was hit by a bus and killed or the one that drowned in her bath for the same reason. Or if the person has got some kind of cancer, they may feel because the pain's gone away, I'm not going to go to the doctors, I'm no, not so going to have the so therapy. This, this really is dangerous business. It's very dangerous, and these people kill more people than are actually healed. Mark Havel, ChristianVideos.co.uk, a man who used to do these very things that you're hearing described. Sir, I'm reading an article from an individual who was describing what is going on here, and they... This slaying of the spirit, having people fall down, has its doctrinal roots in Christian Gnosticism and mystical Eastern religions, awakening the chakra, serpent power, Hindu Kundalini yoga techniques, laying out of the hands, the Shakti Path initiation. Do we see some of these things, the falling down, the people kind of going wild, barking, laughing, being drunk, etc., going on in some of these other Eastern religions? Yeah, you can travel around the world, you'll see exactly the same practices using exactly the same methods uh, being played out. It's just that the, 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 the practitioners change and the name they do it in changes. I mean, if you believe in the, in the person on the stage, whether it be a hypnotist or a faith healer or a guru, he can pray for you in the name of Homer Simpson, and, you, and if you believe, you'll fall down. Because you are underneath this hypnotic, you're wanting it absolutely and it happens so when we see the things like drunk in the spirit and adults on the floor laughing like no drunk people i've ever seen in my <laughs> life frankly but that it's because they're under this suggestive state sure and it doesn't matter who's doing it as long as they're doing the techniques right you could pray for them in the name of bruce it would work <laughs> yeah Wow, very shocking stuff and you know of whereof you speak because you yourself used to do it and what got you out of it was Read the scriptures. That's it. Let's That's see if this stuff aligns with the Bible. All right, Mark Havel, sir, we're grateful for your time. You're welcome.